Hi, uh, I am Dr. Simone Sorderberg, and welcome to the overview of the Master of Education program at Grandview University. And my name is Rick Eftink, and I'm the Director of Graduate and Adult Admissions here at Grandview, and I'll be helping Simone. Excellent. Do you want to start over because I had that bar, that Zoom bar there? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, all right. And we also didn't really talk about how we we're going to open, but here we go. Hi, I am Dr. Simone Sorderberg, and uh, I am in the education department at Grandview University, and we are here to give you an overview of our Master of Education program. And my name is Rick Eftink. I'm the Director of Graduate and Adult Admissions, and I'll be helping and assisting Simone throughout the presentation. Thank you, Rick. So what are we here to talk about today? We are here to tell you about the Master of Education and Culturally Responsive Teacher Leadership. Um, for this master's degree, you complete one endorsement at the graduate level, and that endorsement could be in ELL or the state calls it the ESL certification for your licensing um, or English language learners. It could be a, an endorsement in strategist one or two for special education or in reading. And we've actually um, added an option whereby you can just take um, classes at the graduate level that will uh, apply to the masters of ed that you can choose. Um, and, and then you can opt to not get a certification from the state. That way we call that kind of the choose your own adventure or choose your own pathway option. Um, so once you complete your endorsement or you complete uh, 18 hours or six courses at the graduate level in areas of your choice, you then take an additional five, that's only five additional core courses to earn your master's degree. And we also offer an instructional coaching certificate and that is just for one additional credit hour. So if you are very interested in becoming an instructional coach at your school, this might be a great option. It's a great thing to include on your resume. Um, Rick, what would you like to add about uh, the FED and what it's all about? Sure, well, th this, this program in particular is very exciting. We actually redesigned it as a university uh, a couple of years ago because of the uh, shifting cultural and uh, demographic changes that are coming not only to Iowa, but across America um, to kind of help embrace that and better train the teachers that are gonna be dealing and working with that. Um, that's where we get the cultural responsive teacher leadership. Um, the other part is that when we spoke with um, different superintendents or different people in leadership positions in school districts, they wanted leadership in their employees. That's something they strove for. So we kind of combine those to some, um, create something that's not only more adept, but also more fitting for today's uh, world. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Rick, for providing some background information about that. But, and you're absolutely right. Principals and superintendents are looking for teachers who are culturally competent and culturally responsive, um, teachers who can adapt and who can provide leadership to others um, in working with diverse populations, which many of our students are now very diverse. And so our degree really focuses on the equity and the inclusion aspects of diversity. So who should apply for this uh, MED program or who should go for this master's in education here at Grandview? The MED is for those who want to be classroom teachers still but you want to develop your school leadership skills. So you wanna kind of take on some more roles of leadership or just to be you know, a leader in your department or among the teachers in your school. Um, this is also a great degree for classroom teachers who want to become an instructional coach, a mentor, a lead teacher. Um, so a lot of teachers, and, and I remember being in this position as well, a lot of times you want to take on leadership roles, but you don't necessarily want to go into full-fledged administration. You don't want to become a principal or a vice principal or something along those lines because your heart is really still in your teaching. Um, a great option then is to become an instructional coach or 
whatever your school's equivalent is to that. Uh, you do a lot of leadership with that, but you still do teaching um, and working with teachers on their instructional practices. Uh, this degree is a wonderful way to prepare for that. And then just anybody who wants to become more knowledgeable about education issues and um, how to you know, start programs or how to start initiatives um, in your school, um, you know, to take on some leadership roles and responsibilities, this, this would be a great master's degree for you. Anything that you would like to add, Rick? Well, from the admission side, I will say that this is one of our faster growing master's degrees. Uh, we we get a lot of people that come here originally thinking, maybe I just want to pick up an endorsement. Um, and they end up enrolling and completing the master's because it, it fits so well together. Um, we have alumni who are returning. We have like I say, a lot of people that just originally came here just maybe wanting to get a, maybe an ELL endorsement or something along those lines. And then when they realize how few classes it takes and how well it fits together and their interactions with the faculty and staff at Grandview, uh, they pursue on. We, we get that. It's very common and it's really encouraging. Yeah, that is, that is a trend that I've noticed as well. And when I think back to my experiences and when I was pursuing my master's Degree and then eventually my doctorate. I think this would have been a really great option because right. I could have added, you know, that endorsement, which would have made me more marketable as a teacher. But I was always interested in some form of school leadership as well. And I think that this degree is really tailored to those interests and, and those needs. So when could you complete this? Um, you can start it basically at any time. It doesn't matter if it's summer, fall, or spring, you can start the degree at your convenience. Um, and once you have completed your endorsement, which you can also start at your convenience and plan out with your advisor so that you're never taking you know, too many classes at the same time, or you're not taking a class when you're really busy and that kind of thing. Um, but once you complete your endorsement at the graduate level or you choose your own adventure classes, then you complete five additional courses online as Rick uh, referred to. And these are the five courses in leadership that you take. Uh, you would take culturally responsive school leadership, improving collaborative culture through coaching, modeling, and mentoring. So there's that instructional coaching piece. Um, the focus of that course is, is heavily on that. Empowering the community through education. So one of the things that many teachers struggle with and want to be better at is working with families and community organizations. And this course does a wonderful job of um, helping you to build those relationships and to utilize those relationships. Research and education is a great way to learn more about your school and your classroom and your students and what is effective in your instructional practices and how you might improve. And then finally, education policy and law gives you a nice overview of the current um, milieu of education and, and the issues that um, are, are hot, so to speak, in education that are really important in education right now. Uh, each of those courses is eight weeks long and they are entirely online. They're divided into one week modules and within that module, you work pretty much at your own pace. There are a couple of deadlines during that module, but there's also a lot of flexibility. And you can complete all five courses in just one year. Is there anything you want to add to that? You know, when I speak with uh, teachers, when I speak with all people who enroll in graduate programs, uh, a very common question is, is when? Um, and Simone's touched on all these courses and described them and described the length and everything. But what I would encourage anybody who's listening to this is start the process now. Um, having worked in this field for years, you'd be surprised how many people come back to me a year later and they say, well, maybe I wanna start in fall. And then fall goes by because something happens. And then spring comes like, well, I don't wanna start in spring because of this. And then spring comes by and then all of a sudden, well, I don't wanna start in summer because it's summer. So summer goes by and year and years go by when the key is to get started. That is the hardest part. So when I think of the when, I think of the now. Um, get this process started. Uh, it takes a while to do some of the applications because you have to get transcripts and we'll get into that in a little bit, but 
don't push it off because all you're really doing is hurting yourself with the lack of the education. And really, I mean, these are the things you need to progress in your career anyways. So get the most advantage of them. Get them as early as you can to take the full advantage of the education you want. Absolutely. And school districts pay you more. Um, I don't know of any school districts that don't. Uh, some pay as much as $5,000 extra per year if you have a master's degree. So it might be financially beneficial to you um, to start it now as well. Uh, when I started my master's degree and eventually my doctorate, I had a great friend of mine who said, you know, I was thinking about how long it was going to take to get that master's degree. Oh, two years. It felt so long. Um, and my good friend said, hey, you know what? It will be done before you know it. <laughs> it, will go, it will go by so fast. And my friend was exactly right. Um, it just flew by. And before you knew it, I, I had that master's degree and, and eventually my, my doctorate. So why should you complete this degree? Like I said earlier, are you considering administration but would prefer to stay in your classroom for now? Um, I was in that position. Would you like to become an instructional coach, mentor, or a lead teacher? Or, you know, simply would you like to acquire additional leadership and instructional coaching skills? Um, so, you know, this program is designed to make you a better teacher, uh, to make you a better leader, a better coach, if that is your prerogative. And I think that you will, you'll find that our classes are very hands-on. Uh, there are many takeaways that you can use immediately in your classroom if you if you are so inclined the classes are designed by educators they're taught by people who are currently in the field or who have been in the field um, they've been principals and administrators I teach um, you know a couple of the classes and I was a district um, level administrator so I bring my experience and, and that's how we designed the program was to make it as teacher friendly as possible to really give you what um, you need to be to be the best that you can be. Right. And I would say another why, Simone, is, you know, we've just been through uh, months and months of a pandemic and we don't know exactly sure when it ends or when we get back to whatever we consider normal. Um, and during this time, we've seen a dramatic increase in graduate education as opposed to undergraduate education. And that's no different with teachers because I think what they're really saying now is if I go back and further my education, I really want to get the value of it. I want to get the most money for it. And it's really not a bad time to do it because it's not normal. We can't go to concerts like we would and enjoy our favorite musicians. You know, We can't do a lot of this other stuff that we've taken for granted for years and years. So spend that time really improving yourself and doing it now, because then when we can't get back to fully normal, which hopefully is soon, but we don't know for sure, when we get back there, you can enjoy all the things you've waited for and you won't be spending time. Um, you know, you already have completed the stuff you wanted to and be done with it and use this, what many people consider kind of a, a downtime for something really positive for yourself and for your future. Yeah, great points, excellent points. Um, and then hopefully you have learned a lot about our program and realized that this might be a great option for you. And so now we're gonna talk about how to apply for the program. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put these bullets down there and I'll let Rick talk about how to apply to the program. <laughs> this, is, this is why she kept me around for this part, folks. Um, <laughs> because Simone's great. She, she does a great job advertising or, and kind of speaking to the program. Uh, a few things that you should know about Gravy. We try to make it as, as easy as possible for you. We, we follow you with the process. We're your partner in this. We don't try to make it difficult. Um, we don't make you take unnecessary Go jump through unnecessary hoops like go take a GRE or anything like that. Uh, it's relatively simple. We need your bachelor degree earned from your undergraduate career or wherever you graduated from your undergraduate institution. We need that. We need a copy of your current teaching license, which we can help you get. Uh, we also want, typically we want you to have a 3.0 to 4.0 grade point average. If you have below a 3.0, we might ask you to write a letter to kind of explain what struggles you had and what's changed and why you'll be more focused and kind of look forward to that in the future. And then you just have to complete the rest of the application online. Um, it's very simple. You'll see Stephen Kellogg's name on there. He's fantastic at walking you through this and taking you step by step, keeping track of what you've turned in 
anything else you would need and letting you know where you're at with your status. So we look at it as, as a partnership. Um, as far as the scholarships goes, this is the only graduate program that has its own scholarship. It's called the Jacobson Scholarship. It's between 500 to $1,000 per term, so that could be spring, summer, and fall. You do need to keep your grade point average above a 3.0, and you need to be nominated by a school administrator, but it's very, very rare to have any scholarship for master's programs. Um, you know, I know Simone has one, I have a master's myself, so we value the education, but I, I know I was not fortunate enough to <laughs> receive any scholarship money. Simone, were you lucky enough to have any scholarship money? Oh my gosh, no, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. The right arm for her scholarship for graduate right. school. I mean, it is so unusual. In fact, Ramsey was the first time that I ever heard of a graduate level scholarship. So, I mean, it's such a wonderful opportunity for teachers. And this is only for education. This is only for the masters of education. Um, so it's, it's very unique and it's a great opportunity to even save more money because we do try to be very conscientious of our students and the costs that they incur in this because you know, especially a master's education is so valuable. Um, we want everybody to try to have access to it. Absolutely. And just so you all know, if you uh, go ahead and start your application process, once you have all your materials in, we usually will notify you of your acceptance within 24, 48 hours. So you don't even have to wait around nervously um, seeing if you got into the program. And Rick talks about that 3.0, if you had below that, we're pretty understanding of that since we know that as undergrads, not, you know, not all undergrads can pull that 4.0 off for whatever reasons they're working multiple jobs or something came up in your life, or maybe you had no idea what you wanted to do yet. So you didn't take it as seriously as you could have. Um, but we look at those and, and most of the time don't even require a letter if it seems like you've really made a lot of progress in your career and, and that kind of thing. And, and uh, as in addition to graduate, I deal with adult education and this is very common where, you know, hiccups happen in life. And yeah. sometimes it's things, you know, self-imposed and sometimes it's things that's out of our control. Sometimes it's responsibilities we have, whether that be to family or to military, um, or sometimes, you know, I'll speak for myself when I first attended college when I was 18, fresh from small town school, I was lucky to be able to get enough grades that I could continue on because it wasn't my top priority. I, I, I was uh, immature for an 18 year old and I was just trying to enjoy as much as I could, you know, for the first year or so before I kind of got my head on straighter and really realized the, uh, how lucky I was to still be there and still be having the opportunity for classes. So we understand that life happens and, you know, we, we try to work with our students on that. Yeah, and we understand that life happens during our graduate program as well. And we work with them whenever things come up, crises come up, whatever the, the case may be. Um, I think we're pretty understanding. We're very understanding, actually. So um, broadening your future possibilities, uh, you know, add a credential to your license, add a master's degree to your salary schedule, however, you know, whatever it is that's motivating you the most, but um, we strongly encourage you to apply by con contacting Stephen Kellogg uh, at skellogg at Grandview or myself at sdorterberg at grandview.edu. And if you prefer phone, if you prefer that over email, Stephen's phone number is 515-263- 6183. So you feel free to call him as well if you prefer that. Um, either one of them, Simone or Stephen, both will take great care of you. Obviously, feel free to contact myself as well, Rick Eftink, if you prefer to do that. But if you reach out, we'll return your call uh, within 24 hours or sooner. And we'd love to just opportunity to kind of talk to you and explain more about the program. Yeah, and we are also open to one on one meetings over Zoom or whatever you're the most comfortable with. And and whatever gives you the most information. So thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us on this webinar.